Each of these ships are seeing some form of development either right now or by the end of the year. I generally don't focus much on ships since there are so many other things in Star Citizen to cover, but I think it'd be nice to know what's in the pipeline. This video will get you up to date on everything we currently know is being worked on, and what players might enjoy them. Consider subscribing for more news and updates about the game, and thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. The Corsair is the most generic ship on this list, which is saying a lot, as this ship is not particularly normal. It's an exploration ship with an additional focus on combat. It features a powerful scanning suite, a large cargo bay, a high amount of firepower for the class of ship, and a unique asymmetric wing set. It comes in at 55 meters in length, which is right around the sweet spot in my opinion, and it crews up to four people. As a Drake ship, it follows utilitarian design practices, but it's definitely not skimping out on form for function. It has a pretty uniform shape aside from the wings, but there's a lot of style here, and I've always thought it might be one of my favorites, especially since it actually has a toilet. Looking at you, Cutlass. The long hallway-like design might be a turnoff, but overall the ship seems to have a nice look and has been in production since late last year, scheduled to finish up 83 weeks of work towards the end of this year. I'd be hesitant to say it'll arrive this year, especially given recent coverage, but there's always a chance. Regardless, you're better off setting expectations for early next year sometime. The Vulture is a funny ship. The shape makes sense, considering it needs a scrap conveyor in the middle. And the name makes sense, given it's a scavenger that eats away at old shipwrecks. But it's hard not to compare it to the Venture from EVE, which is a much larger ship, but similar in shape. Something I talk about more in a video that, well, talks about Star Citizen ships that look like other ships. Anyways, the Vulture is our introduction to the salvage mechanic, something we've been waiting for since it was poorly predicted in 2016 and was subsequently delayed year after year since then. I won't go into why this happened here, but I also have a video for that if you'd like to look more into it. The point is, between monthly reports, Star Citizen Live, Inside Star Citizen, and every other indicator, Salvage Gameplay is finally about to offer a new career opportunity for industrial players. Alongside the Reclaimer and the Multi-Tool Salvaging Attachment, this ship will unlock a new, long sought-after form of gameplay that will continue to grow in the future. The ship itself is very Drake in design with the rugged industrial vibe and a lack of luxuries. But you'll be treated with living quarters which allow for longer missions and plenty of cargo space to keep your salvage materials until you sell. The ship has been seeing work for quite some time and looks to be right on time for its scheduled release with Alpha 318. Anything could happen, but this is looking pretty good for some time this year. The Tugboat The Argo Standard Recovery Vehicle, or SRV, is the only dedicated tugboat planned for the game right now. Making use of the developing tractor beam technology that we've had in handheld form already, this ship will be used for assisting large ships in leaving the atmosphere, moving broken down or derelict ships around, keeping ships stationary for more criminal uses, or just transporting large amounts of cargo. But it actually doesn't stop there. As with many games that land in the immersive sim genre, the tractor beam interacts with items systemically in ways you might not first expect. According to the FAQ on this ship, any items that are within the designated mass range for the tractor beam can be transported by the ship. So creative miners may have fun with the asteroids in the future, moving them around as they see fit. The ship itself though is mid-sized with a length of about 30 meters, making it shorter than the matching raft and mole. Despite the size, the usable interior space is similar to something like the much smaller hull A. You'll be able to bring people along, but you're not going to have much personal space. There is minimal room for some cargo as well, but the point is apparent. The majority of this ship is based around moving other ships, so you're only really getting this ship if you truly need it. 
But you'll be waiting a little while to see it because the ship is scheduled for plenty more work taking to the end of the year. This will likely result in a Q2 or Q3 release of next year, but nothing is set in stone. Probably one of the most anticipated ships in Star Citizen history, the Banu Merchantman will likely be the most detailed and ostentatious spaceship in video game history as well. But correct me if I'm wrong. The ship in lore is actually made by another species, the Banu, as one might intuitively guess. It is meant to be essentially a traveling bazaar, a central meeting place for business, transfers, meetings, and trade. While the initial benefits of a gargantuan cargo hold will allow you to make use of the ship when it releases, likely sometime next year, the primary gameplay is likely a ways off. It hits a weird niche of a hybrid cargo hauling ship that is much more about trading than actually hauling. I tend to be vocal about ships entering the game without their primary gameplay, so this kind of irks me. But the idea of maintaining a home base wherever you like that NPCs and players can come to to see your hard-earned goods it's certainly a dream for many. We're yet to see how CIG might make it happen though, so I would steer clear of this ship for now. As far as the ship itself goes though, it's massive. At over 200 meters long, it carries almost 3,000 units of cargo, more than four times the C2 Starlifter, a current cargo hauling frontrunner. To say this ship can break the current economy is putting it lightly. Hopefully they can get cargo hauling into a better place before this ship comes into the game. The interior is spacious and made to exude luxury, taking a lot of space for a little bit of function. Everything is designed with a more organic and flowing nature, indicative of the Banu style, and the ship itself is filled with beautiful animations and architecture. The ship has been marked in production for almost two years now, and looking to be continuing into next year to complete its 115 weeks of work. It very well may slip further into the year, but I think we might expect it in 2023. Not much is known about the RSI Lynx. It is a ground rover that came with the constellation Phoenix, but being so low priority has never really been talked about much. It was scheduled at some point for work in 2019, but that was apparently rescheduled. It has since been scheduled for and had work begun in 2022. With the reconcepting being complete, we're waiting for the vehicle team to make it game ready. While that work is scheduled to end in the next couple quarters, this is definitely the type of vehicle that will be delayed if need be. So don't get your hopes up just yet. The Crucible is a very old concept for a mobile repair platform meant for industrial players. At 90 meters in length, it's big enough for several crew, and you'll be happy you have them. This ship is meant to take advantage of multiple repair arms and drones that can be controlled by players or NPCs. Users will be able to invite small vehicles to dock and receive repairs or send supplies out to aid larger ships. Players will be able to oversee the work from a great view on the bridge and enjoy the nice anvil design as well. With repair functionality included with the new salvaging mechanic, it's tempting to think this vehicle may be primed for inclusion, but it's not a sure bet. Even with the scheduled work starting late this year and ending early next, there's likely plenty more that needs to be done. And I fully expect this ship to come much, much later than what is shown on the tracker. If true, we'll likely see this updated in the next few months, but I would say stay away from this one as it won't be in the game for a while. But maybe we're in for a surprise. Who knows? The Anvil Legionnaire is the newest ship on this list, and one of the more niche ships at that. The small ship has the unique ability to hack into other ships and override their docking permissions. This is a twofold feature. First is the docking, which is already in game and functioning for ships and stations, and for the constellation and its parasite fighter. However, the Legionnaire won't have to ask for permission to dock to another ship. It will also be one of the first introductions of hacking gameplay though. In this form of hacking, a member on the boarding ship will need to overcome the defenses of a member of the defending ship in order to forcibly open the docking port of a boarding attempt. This member could either be a player or a bladed defense system in the other ship. 
As you can imagine, this is one of the more exciting combat scenarios and will factor into resource management. Engineers will be able to isolate parts of the ship, vent the atmosphere, turn off the gravity, and more. This will be a pretty big gameplay addition to the game as we've been waiting for hacking gameplay and more opportunities to board ships. You also get the added benefit of it being an anvil ship. The company makes for some pretty cool designs when it comes to more combat focused side of the game. You'll be waiting a bit for all of this to be possible though. Work on the ship began late last year before it was announced, but won't be wrapping up until Q1 of next year at the earliest. There's no knowing when exactly it will be made available to players, but I wouldn't expect it for a few more updates. The Misk Hull C is the much older sibling of the Hull A that's already in game. It has been one of the longest developed ships in the game, showing signs of late stage artwork all the way back in late 2017. Besides that, the physics that go into making sure physical elements could attach to the cargo spindles took much longer than expected to make work. With all of that work behind us now though, the ship has been brought back out for final preparation before it enters the game. And if you thought the merchantman might break the economy when it enters the game, this ship hauls a ridiculous 4,600 units, compared to the merchantman's almost 3,000. So this is another reason why I would really like to see CIG fix the cargo hull in gameplay ASAP. The ship itself, as far as design goes, is also pretty striking, though it does fall in line with MISC's chrome and rounded edges that we always expect. Ultimately, this ship will be one of the major pillars of Star Citizen's economy, and it's one of the older important concepts from all the way back in 2013 that deserves a place in the game. It has work scheduled out until the end of the year, but as with all ships, don't expect it any earlier than a quarter after that time. And with 4.0 sucking up all the air in the room, I could see this slipping to late next year. Finally, the X-1 is a hovercraft made by Origin Jumpworks, the luxury manufacturer of the game. The design is truly unique and I can't decide if I like it, so I guess that means it's high luxury. It's not a drastic change from existing hover bikes, offering more variety to the field. There's no clear reason why it has taken years to come to game, other than that it's just not really needed. But we now know that it fits into a 400i perfectly, so there's that. And we know it looks kind of like it's flying backwards. Regardless, this is another hover bike coming to the game, seeing work scheduled to end early next year. There's a good chance more work will need to be done, but the bike is currently underway and on its way to our hands. These aren't all the ships currently being worked on. There are also several unannounced vehicles and ships that have work scheduled or have been reported on in monthly reports. There is plenty of development going on with ships, but as most of my channel is dedicated to, the features coming to this game are where the real excitement is. While ships are a massive part of the game, the experience surrounding these ships is what really matters, and the number of teams working on other parts of the game is huge. If you're interested in learning more about how this game is being developed, what features and optimizations are being worked on, and when we might see new gameplay, consider subscribing to the channel. Join me on my live stream, come check out my podcast on my second channel which dives deeper into these topics, or look at my monthly report playlist detailing each month's work from the studio on this game. There are plenty of ways to learn more about this game that don't actually focus on the ships. I'm happy to continue providing all types of content for you to follow it, and that includes my monthly supporter exclusive videos looking at topics like scope creep, the history of development, and failed features like hover mode. Any YouTube channel members or Patreon supporters can access these videos whenever they like, along with other benefits of supporting the channel. Regardless, I hope you learned something new in this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.